on the live stream. So we're going to go ahead and begin um, while, while our people here are getting their snack, you know, some light refreshments, we'll go ahead and begin. Uh, we have an agenda that we're going to follow. Um, I'm just welcoming you at this point, and I'm just so happy that you came on to be with us and to get in on the discussion. This is, this live stream will be uh, recorded, and so you will be able to go back and uh, view it and maybe share it with some of your family members or um, people that, that, are, that are interested in language revitalization. So this is a very important topic. Today we're going to uh, start out with a couple of stories. And the way the agenda is going to flow is we're going to have one of our language teachers come up and she's going to share a couple of stories. One of them is an old, old Comanche story. No, you're not going to? Okay. We're going to do one Comanche story. And so it's not the old story. <laughs> I'm sorry. If Billy Craig's going to share a story that was translated. Yeah, you can bring a chair. It was translated by her and Patricia Bread. Dustin, do you know which story it is? It's the one that was illustrated. Yeah, it's about a bear. Oh, I'm not supposed to tell you what it's about. We're not going to translate it for you. Uh, we uh, will translate it for you into English at the end of the roundtable discussion. So if you want to hang in, then she's going to read it in Comanche, I just want to give kudos to her and Patricia. They work very hard. Um, every day they work in my program, the child care program. Um, not only do they go work, you can sit down right there. You want to stand up? No, because those mics. I'll hold this for you. So, um, you want to stand? <laughs> I'll try to get her to sit. But uh, you're going to see the live stream. We'll put up the illustration. And Patricia Bread, who's a, who's a first language speaker of the Comanche language, she's also a great artist and illustrator for us. So she does stuff like this for our program. And so I'm going to have Billy go ahead and read this story. And like I said, we'll translate it at the end. So just listen up. Ita <laughs> Na so the Uri Makarui Suse the Kaawoma Uhuni Gehenana de Kakat U Heights Kahu Kimaitzi Noa no Kopa Utun Suse Wasape Utiakwe no he taku an ira wasapeta evia no he taku no anoko kehena hina hikat semeta uri ni mind mariakwe tabukina ta ikan suse fina noko pa utun so said, what's up, hey, Utiahweke? Ura, ura. Tabukina ta nans, namsi ikan. What's up, hey, se, ura ko. Ha, mekse tabukina. Tabukina unata vi titiahweke. Uhuna, 
pe kui ha u u tun. So ti pe kui kat era wasape o te aupe. Ertse i te ma sura huna te aupe. So se so se janeti so ti pe kui ha ne kua hun wasape te aupe. Ura, suse tereku parai mo o soko vi tuku kimai. So te nga ka tawa i ka sesamana ha ha ya. O o tuhu tu tehu tu wini ket uk pitan. Wasape te kaphana na yara, te asa puhi huwa, mekse sura uni kuihu. Wasape uri te awek, kesa! Wasape kertsami, suse kertakaran muhavuni. Mahatsa kamar hipkat, nase na kehina hipkat, Nā rakan awoma kehe tā uk. Ka huta, ke tā ai nā sukat, sō te nā nā tā kat kat, a nā rā mui pā te awek. U hai tīma, kwa wai, tā tō kwa kat, sūra wa sa pē te awek. Ura, nā u uk aha tākin, so se oyet karen, wasape suk karen, u haiz maai karen. Sura u haiz u huku kanikat. So suni sama oyet tökan. So se wasape tāne sukat, wasape ha tiakwe. Ura mani kuihu. The end. I can barely see my writing up there. Ura. Okay. So we're going to give the English translation of that story at the end of the of the round table. Um, right now we're going to have some instructions. The way the agenda is going to go tonight is that we're going to have a, a few questions, at least two. It depends on how long they take and how long the discussion is. But we're going to go ahead and frame it for you. And so we have about... We already opened with a prayer before we got our snacks, and so I did the welcome. So now we're going to go ahead and go into the roundtable discussion. And so, Dustin, did you? You didn't put a graphic for it, did you? No. Okay. Okay, we're going to go right into the roundtable discussion. The way it's going to work is um, the people that are present here are going. We're going to put you um, into at least a couple of groups, maybe three groups, and then we'll go ahead and you guys will do the discussion of the question, and then we'll have someone that will be report out for your table or for your group, and so we're going to give you the questions are on the agenda, and I will read them for the purposes of the live stream audience, but then we'll have some discussion about it. The, the people that are joining us on the live stream, uh, they can, can you give us some instruction about the live stream? <clears throat> Dustin Miller. Yeah, we can uh, put it on the screen in here and we can uh, put it out there on the, on the live stream broadcast. So if you wanna like, what the, say what the question is, I can type it up here and then we can display it. 
Okay, but if they want to ask us a question, are they able to ask us a question? Uh, yeah, give me a couple minutes, I'll pull that up okay. on the live stream message board. Okay, there is a live stream message board, so you can go ahead and once the question's pulled up, you'll see it. Dustin, yeah. can you explain how that works? Yeah, you'll be able to see it. I'll put it on the screen where you see the question, and uh, then they can uh, just get on the message board and ask, and we can take a few or however many you want from the message board. Okay. Okay, so we're going to be rearranging here for a minute. And then um, the first question is a what if question. So I gave some examples on the agenda. So I want you to think about the possibilities that can come about after our language is re revitalized. So this is looking into the future, not now. But just think about the possibilities and formulate your own what if. And I'll share. OK. Um, what if you fully understood the story that was just told by Billy Kreger that you saw on the screen? What if you fully understood that without having to read it by just listening? So that's an example. So start brainstorming, and then we're going to put these guys into, I'll give a couple more examples. This one's mine. What if you or your da'i or heights spoke nama or namana at school all day and the thaival, the thaival did not know what you were saying? So that was mine. I'll give one more. What if you and your grandchild could hold a conversation in Namana, or vice versa. What if you, yeah, you or your grandchild could come up and hold a conversation with you in Namana. So we're thinking about the possibilities. Come in, Rita. What if you? Come in. And I just want to, as we're going to rearrange you guys into groups, and this is our first discussion. And then I want you guys to maybe share, if you have, if you think they're all really great and outstanding, then we can have your, someone at your table report out. But then if you're just joining us and you're welcome to any of the refreshments at any time, just help yourself. And so we're going to take about 10 minutes and then we'll see how, you, how you're doing. And we'll come around and help and I'll bring the supplies by. How are we going to get in groups? Um, I need, why don't we get like four people? What do you think, Randy? You think about four people to a group? Three or four. So I need, if you guys could get at the same table, that would be great. So I have a table here. Do you guys want to be a group over here? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Do you want to come over here? And then, you guys want to be a group here? <coughs> I have four groups, at least three. And then, uh, live stream audience, please type in some what if, answer my, my, my what if. I have a sign-in sheet that I want you to sign. I'll bring it by. I 
I want to welcome the Comanches out in New Mexico that are on the live stream. Welcome. I'll put the question on the message board too. Illustrator. supposed to say things like what if what if we all what we're trying to do what if we all talk convention and nobody talks English. back to our culture and our ways. The only thing. Yeah. My, my, my older son said, uh, I wish we did in the old Indian ways, way back then. I said, he said, don't you, Mama? I said, no. How come they use I said, well, you try having a baby out there with no doctor. <laughs> that would be my only scare.
had five all students. We had one through five all last year. But they, they try harder. No, they do. That's why they don't want to be embarrassed and they, not know. They do that because these little kids that are thyroids in the daycare, they talk better and faster than those numina. There's, there's more numina there than thyroids, and then thyroids are, uh, they'll, we're going to sit down. Next summer, he always say, I got a yeah, I got a yeah. And they'll say, huh, oh, and care. You know. <laughs> that little Manassi boy, he he told he told these kids, this boy was down in that. He said, Grisha talks Comanche, but she did, she forgot how to say banana. <laughs> I said, you shouldn't have told. Him. He said she didn't, she forgot how to say banana. That's hard. Banana, isn't it? Can you say it, banana? What is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. The, the, the say the same, like table, the, like table, yeah, and chairs and, and fork. Fork. They're all the same. <clears throat> Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and there's the thing that I'm against because what if you just taught them one word at a time? And that's not going to make it. you got to make a sentence with them because that's how they really learn. What if they, they just said one word and they said, you know, uh, and they'll, you know, all they'll say, or they want something, they'll just say, uh, uh, what would we say that they want? Duh, And how they, how you gonna know, you know, it don't make no sense if they just say, duh, Those sentences come first. You are, because you're going to write it for me, because I can't, I don't have these glasses at oh. Here, write it. This, this is a... Uh, you don't want me to write it. I want nobody to be able to read it if I write it. I went and got these for quite a bit. And you can't see out, you can't see out of it. The, the, the thing is this low, and I, I can't see it. It's, I'm, boy, we've got to, I'm going to get some new ones. <laughs> what did it say? I hope so. I thought that we was going to have a crowd and miss it. Que camara saltis de capas de family. I kept thinking that, but because they knew what they were doing. What if they all 
kids a lot, as much as I can, just And he said, that's long. I said, no, it's not. Say it again. He's getting to where he can say it. Or, do it. My twin sister said, or else, can I am I Okay, I'm going to give you about a minute. Did you hear what my sister said? We're going to have your truth said, get hit. The, uh, Randy, get the, at then least one, but if you have two or even three that you really, really like, then you can share them. And you'll just have to pick someone in your table to read it out loud to everyone. So I'm going to give you a minute, a couple minutes, to go ahead and wrap up and pick the ones that you like the best out of your groups. Okay. And don't forget there's snacks and stuff over here if you want it. <laughs> Would you bring Susan? <laughs> should be, uh, the language program is 100% successful. Yay, that's a great one. That's a very good one. 
Good job. Oh, it was good job. Yeah, I know everyone did a great job, so we'll let Bubba share theirs. We can hear with that, right? Oh, good. We can be heard, right? The mic will be there. All right. Uh, I didn't understand this fully exactly what we were supposed to do, but I got what if all Comanches were happy and excited again when they hear our language spoken? Or just tell us who's at your table. Just for the live stream. Okay. <laughs> Rita. Rita. Uh, hi, uh, my name's Justin Bose, and I'm representing the uh, Yaparuk uh, table. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we got a couple of uh, questions that we came up with. The first one was, uh, what if my six-year-old daughter was learning to read and write in Comanche during school? And our other question was, what if there were a Comanche Dictionary app you could access online 24-7? 24-7 meaning 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Okay. Oh. Okay. What if everyone had to take a language class before they received a per capita? <laughs> the other one was, um, what if your Namak Dekwa was better than your Thaigo Dekwa? Yeah. Oh. So, that's a good one. But this, one's Car this was Carolyn's, and this I like this one. It says, what if you had dreams in Comanche? I like that. Mm. Thank you guys did a great job. I think Bubba just had a go ahead and go we, to we were finished. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we go just ahead. Said one. Okay, say uh, another one. You we got two more. What if you could tell your own story in Comanche? Yes, I love that one. Uh, also, what if our Comanche children identified themselves as Comanche? Mm. A lot of them don't. So that's what we want. Yes, that's the goal. With the language they will. Do we have anything online? Yes, uh, Dustin's, go I'm going to share some. Okay. Where am I at? Okay. Catherine Briner is on the uh, live stream. Welcome. She said, here's my what if. What if we had a really great digital language resource that was useful, interactive, incorporate, incorporated, oh, that incorporated audiovisual recordings helping you to learn and prioritize our ways of knowing? Yes, that's great. Absolutely, that's a good one. Absolutely, absolutely. Are there any more that we want to share online? Um, not yet. They, they were having some technical difficulties. Right? Okay. Our New Mexico people <clears throat> were having a technical difficulty. We, there's, let me answer that real quick. Okay. Um, answer your question, um, Jan, out there in New Mexico, uh, while we're live streaming, we're unable to replay earlier portion of the uh, event. So uh, we're working on that. But um, uh, the, you see what we're doing right now. So if you want to ask a question, it's just kind of a... Um, a question about what is your what if uh, and you see all the questions that are being asked so that's what uh, kind of thing we're doing right now <laughs> sorry yeah. thank you for your patience okay we're on question number two and we'll take about 10 more minutes and then after this question we're going to do a little bit of reflection just for a few minutes and then we're going to give you important information 
about the Comanche language planning and development line item, which is going to be voted on this year's fiscal year's budget. And so we're going to tell you what it is, how is it different from previous language programs, and an explanation of the phases that we have, that we expect it to go through. So I'm going to give you the second question, and then we'll have the English, English translation of the story that was told earlier. So, um, this question, do you need to type this, Dustin? What yeah, is the first question on your agenda? We'll just, we'll just go with that one right now. I don't think we have time to do. Actually, I think I'll give your group an option to do one question out of those three, okay? So the first question is, what do you believe is the responsibility of the Comanche Nation to the revitalization of our language. And then the second one is, what do you believe is your responsibility as a citizen of the Comanche Nation to the revitalization efforts of our language? And the third one is, what would you do to assist in the revitalization of our language? So there's a three, you'll get three choices. The first one is what do you believe is the responsibility of the Comanche Nation? And the second is what do you believe is your responsibility individually as a citizen? And the third one is what would you do to assist in the revitalization of our language? So I'll let your group decide. We'll take okay, why don't these guys will do number one. Does anyone want to take on number two? Maybe your group do number two? And we can report out. Y'all want to do number two? Okay, that table will do number three. And then I'll let you guys, what would you do to assist in the revitalization of our language? Do y'all want to do that or y'all want to do one of the other ones? Yeah. Bubba? Huh? Do you want to do that last one? What? what can you do or what would you do to assist in the revitalization of our language? Okay. Okay. And then this group up here, Mr. Red Elk, you guys can do, I'll let y'all decide which one you want to do. We got all three covered. So you guys decide which one you want to do. And online, you can answer any one of those three. <laughs> they should be able to see you. I think the tribe has the tribe bears 100% responsibility in the revitalization of our language. CDC needs to help the nation in every way and also needs to participate. Yes. And the citizens of the nation also need to be involved in the process. Yeah. As to fully become well, that's true too. Well, I have a secret coming from I feel like the I feel like that's the responsibility of the responsibility to promote the affiliation. Yes. Yes. Learn the language, teach your language, yes, speak the exactly. language. Exactly. Speak it all the time. Don't be ashamed. Yeah. Through support, through and don't be funding, afraid you're going to see through, it all. Uh, That's advocating important. to try to remember. I know why. Because 
language is the foundation and the cornerstone of who we are. And Absolutely. it's the reason why, it has everything to do with the reason why we are a Yeah, that was really good. That's good. You know, when I'm driving on the road, I...
Okay, you guys, I love, 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 love the discussion. And so I'm glad you guys are, are hearing the discussion. And so I'm just happy that you're here. I'm happy the people online are here. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this group over here. And just tell us which question uh, that you chose and they give us some of your answers. Again, let me introduce myself. Now I know the names of my table mates, so I can <laughs> let you know who they are. My name's Justin Bowes. I currently serve as the uh, director for our workforce program. I have Rita Kusawoon here on my left. I've got Lynn Munoz, Michelle Robinson, and Curtis Munoz here present. And we answered question number two, the second question, what do you believe is your responsibility as a citizen of the Comanche Nation to the revitalization efforts of our language? Well, we came up with a number of responses. The first one, <clears throat> we said we want to learn as much as we can so that we can pass it on to our children. Second thing we came up with is conduct or help to promote uh, community Comanche language courses uh, in your individual communities. I'm um, from Cash. We have the uh, Cahoma building there we can utilize. Apache, uh, the people that live in Apache have the Apache Community Center they could utilize. I know some of this is already happening, but let's expand on it. Okay, I know they do it in Indihoma, I think at Post Oak. Every night. Yeah, I think that's taught by Virgie uh, Casnavoid. Sam and Sam Devinney. Okay, so um, those are the things we can be doing. Use it in everyday conversation. Wouldn't that be beautiful? Uh, actively promote the revitalization of our language. Everywhere, everywhere you go, every day. Uh, label your environment. I sit at home sometimes thinking about, I should put a sign on the refrigerator, you know, uh, having it read what it what it means in Comanche so my daughter can see it every day and if if we did that for a week she would know it by the end of the week simple little things like this we could be doing um, <laughs> uh, endorse the formation of a tribal school okay we, I, I believe the table believes that um, we need a school where you can formally learn this that's owned by Comanches so that we don't have to rely on the state or the federal government to do what we need to be doing ourselves. Uh, encourage Cameron University to, to develop a Comanche language course, OU, USAO, uh, OSU even. Hey. They're, probably, they're probably learning Pawnee over there. Leave them alone. Hey. Um, spell out Comanche words phonetically to help you learn as well as the, uh, the formal way of, of uh, spelling Comanche words. So uh, that's our list. I think it's a pretty good list. Good list. Wow. Great. Good list. That was a great list. OK, I'm coming across. <clears throat> Can you tell who's at your table? Oh, you already told who's at your table, didn't you? Um, Anani, I saw Randy Lynn Atakani, 
I am uh, currently serving as the director for the Comanche Nation Youth Program. And I introduced my table earlier, but I didn't give their titles or where they, where they um, but I'm gonna pass it around so everyone can introduce themselves real fast and then we can go into our question. I'm Paula Cardi. I am a reporter for the Comanche Nation News. Uh, my name is Susan Whitehorse Johnson. I'm actually Kiowa, but I work at Walters Public Schools and I probably have a total of about 150 Comanche students that attend Walters Public Schools. So that's why I'm here. Hi, I'm Barbara Gooden, and I've been with the Comanche Language and Cultural Preservation Committee for 25 years. My name is Dustin Miller, and I work with the Comanche Nation IT Department in the Media Division. Um, we took the first question, which is, what do you believe is the responsibility of the Comanche Nation to the revitalization of our language? And we came up with a number and percentage. We believe that it's 100% is the, the responsibility of the nation to revitalize our language, specifically because um, the priority should be at a level one priority. Uh, language is the cornerstone and foundation of our culture. It is what distinguishes us and also connects us to our, our fellow uh, NUMIC speakers. Um, we talked about, what else did we talk about? We talked about a lot. This was a big question, and so one of the things that we said that they, to be able to promote and push and even maybe come up with legislation that would promote that for our people because it is the core principle and value of what makes us Comanche is our language, and without that, we are, that's it. Is there anything more you want to add to this, I think? I know we talked about a lot of stuff. I think we discussed and I stopped writing because I was engaged too much. Do you want to add to this? Mm, no. I know, we get on a soapbox and this could take a while. <laughs> Let me say something. <clears throat> I'll say one thing. Uh, yeah, we started out talking about um, uh, just different things about like what we need and different things, but then it kind of came out that uh, it really is a priority to a lot of us, and I think a lot of younger people have real, a really uh, strong passion and a desire to want to learn more. And this younger generation is representing us, and they they're just showing it every day. You look online; these kids are just all about it. So we we feel like we need to do everything we can as a nation to support them and give them the tools and resources that they need. You know, from here on out, we're at the we're at the end. We just have a few speakers left. Um, so we do feel like it's a big responsibility for our government, for our leaders, our tribal leaders, to prioritize these things that, and they should never be changed. It should always be established and, and uh, permanent. Yes, thank you. Thank you. How was conversation? Oh, we have some good. Amen. Uh, amen. Amen. We're going to add. We're going to. We're going to go back to the online after we have these groups report out, but I just wanted to add something to that. Um, you know, we have an election, you know, the Oklahoma teachers walked out and now they're all running for, for the seats. Maybe that needs to happen. <laughs> you know, I know that we, we have elections coming up, you know, we really truly need to advocate for what we want to happen in our nation. And so your vote counts. You know, the people that are going to be campaigning very soon, you might, I think, I know I am, I'm going to ask them, you know, what, is their, what are their priorities? What are their priorities? When we vote them in, what are they going to, is, is language and culture going to be a priority? Because it should be. I'll let these guys report it. I'll uh, say a little bit, then I'll hand the mic over to Ron. Uh, we kind of answered all three questions as one. And we think uh, it is a big responsibility of the, of the nation, the, our government. Up here at the complex, they need to all speak Comanche to each other as much as possible. Every day, every day. The more you, the more you speak, the more, the faster you'll learn, and, and you'll retain it a lot better. 
um, and, and that goes into, uh, as citizens of the nation, and every citizen out there that is willing to learn the language, uh, we talked about they need to enter the language with respect, respect for the language. Don't just try to look up, well, what, what could be used as a dirty word? Because in our language, there was no dirty words. It was just our language. And uh, <clears throat> it, it's the English that translates it into a, a dirty word. <clears throat> so <clears throat> as long as you enter in with respect for the language and all that it could teach you, <clears throat> as you go along learning the language, you're going to gain respect from the language or you're going to gain respect by learning the language. You're going to gain respect for, for elders. You're going to um, gain respect for other Comanches and other points of view and just in every aspect of Comanche life you'll learn the language will, will teach you the respect. <clears throat> and uh, another thing was, was help each other learn. Help each other learn uh, different words and, and understand the word that, that, that you are learning. I mean, uh, Mr. Bo said, you know, teach your kids, talk to your kids and, and teach them well, from what I've been around the language is, you know, we're all trying to learn and we're pretty much like kids ourselves, you know, trying to learn a new language. And except for the, the, the speakers. So we can always help each other and everybody can help each other each other understand and, and don't criticize people oh you're saying this wrong or or that's not how you say that um, and then uh, what would you do to assist in the revitalization of our language and I'll hand it over to Ron <coughs> no, responsibility responsibility assist it is a responsibility of each and every Comanche <coughs> nation member to get involved. Whether you want to or not, it's your responsibility if you want the language to move forward. If you don't want that, what are you? Are you a dialogue? Are you you Daiwa or are you Kiowa? <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to dig it <laughs> at my friend. It is, it is our responsibility. That's that's a big word, and it, it should it should resonate in every Comanche's heart. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about the salvation of our people mm -hmm. and like Jonathan said we have to help each other uh -huh. mm -hmm. I just wanted to say something before I have this group report out um, we went to training uh, last week and I got to take some of my ECDC staff and the founder of the ILI, which is Indigenous Languages Institute, he had told us at the beginning of our meeting that with Indigenous languages, that the revitalization efforts was, it was different for Indigenous languages because he said that we have that responsibility. You know, each Indigenous person feels a burden he, I don't know if he used the word burden, but he said that we had that within us. 
as a as an indigenous person that responsibility to perpetuate our culture and our language and I really agreed with the way he put it and I know I'm not saying it exactly the way he said it but basically that's what it really like you know with ding 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 yes that's true that's really true okay I'm gonna have Bubba you want to introduce your table mates does anybody want to introduce themselves before I introduce you <laughs> All right. Uh, I have Deanne Devine, Misty Devine, Billy Craiger, Craiger, I'm sorry, and myself, Edward Tahawal the uh, third. Our question was off the board, but it says, "What would you do to assist in the revitalization of our language?" Uh, our first statement was, "Learn it and teach it." <clears throat> Learning it um, does not mean take your children to class and drop them off. <laughs> so you got free daycare. It means take them, go with them, and learn it with them. And then it will be so much fun. Um, I was privileged as a child to have my parent do that for me. Uh, and I think every Comanche child should be that privilege. Yes. Uh, also, marketing the language. We do not market this language, and we need to. Look at all the Chickasaw commercials. Oh, man, they put all these Chickasaw commercials on there, and they say their language, and then they you know, tell, introduce themselves. That's what we need to do. The Nani and Tsaw, Edward Tawa. No, 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 it's all Tawa. You know, and that's what we got to do. We got to put it out there. We have to put it on TV. You know, we got to put it out there. We might not have as much money as the chickens all, but we sure got the spirit. So, oh. <laughs> moving on from there, potluck. Um, not necessarily saying we gotta feed every time, but hey, if you wanna come, make a dish. Come on, that's what I say. Potluck. Yeah. Come, come visit with us. Come. Number uh, eight. Uh, we have to make the language or class more available. Uh, not once a week in uh, India homes. Not once a week at, at the complex. Make it available at class every day, you know? Uh, when we're talking about this planning and development of our, of this department we're gonna make, people are gonna get paid, right? Yes. Someone is. That person has gotta make it available. So that's what we gotta do. Um, <laughs> This was one thing, is a big thing for all Comanche parents. Your kids don't have a choice. They don't have a choice. Do they vote for our CBC members? No. Do they vote for the President of the United States? No, they do not. They don't have a choice. And they won't have a choice until they're 18. You make them go, they don't have a choice. It'll be fun. That's what they don't realize. I didn't have a choice when I was a kid, and I had fun. <laughs> I met my wife at <coughs> Comanche language class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I could. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, I mean that, they might meet their future significant other. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Hey. <laughs> uh, make it a family event, you know. Yeah. You, might, you might meet your quahu. Yeah. <laughs> uh, being consi consistent uh, so you take you go do that first class keep going be consistent go back go again go often um, using and learning full sentences that's what we yes. gotta do yes. no more this baby talk uh Rabbit, oh, Tabokina. Yeah, yeah, that, 
that's what we know it is. But uh, learn the verbs. Yeah. Learn the verbs. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to do right now. Um, uh, let's see. What is it? Hey. Yeah, you got me on the spot, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Thank you, Billy. Thank you for helping me out. Um, no more baby talk, though. Let's let's put in full sentences. Let's learn full sentences, though. You know. Uh, uh, back to back to this with the parents. The kids do not have a choice. They don't have a choice. Just take them. Don't drop them off. Stay there with them. So that's that's oh. mine. Our two videos. Good job, everyone. Good job. The Vitsi Santa. Barbara, do you want to say something? Yes, I would like to. Anania taught Barbara Gooden. Um, Carolyn brought up something that was on my mind about the Oklahoma teachers that went to the state capitol and what they say now is that they are going to uh, scrutinize the candidates coming up to see what their thoughts are on about education and I think that's an excellent idea I think we should do that with our candidates that are coming up find out what their feelings are on our language and then vote accordingly um, also um, while Bubba was speaking earlier, it brought to mind that in this room, we have two, um, well, one founder of the Comanche language and another whose father was helped found the Comanche language, and that's Mr. Red Elk and uh, Edward III's father, who was Edward II. They were two founders of the organization back in 1992. Um, also tonight, we have two people here that have been certified as Comanche speakers to uh, work with students. One of those is Jonathan Poirway, and the other one is Billy Crager. And then even more importantly, we have two Comanche treasures here tonight, and that is Rita Kusiwoon and Patricia Bread. They are both fluent speakers. Uh, that was their first language. And we should uh, treat them all with the respect that they deserve because they are helping us to preserve this language. In the Comanche Dictionary, we have a page that names all the speakers that have helped us through the years. And many of them are gone now. And so, the um, expertise that Rita <coughs> and Patricia have, um, we need to absorb as much of it as we can while we're fortunate enough to, for them to be here with us. And um, I just uh, want to emphasize that on our candidates, we need to ask them at forums or however they're going to present themselves what their stance is on language and we need to, to uh, vote accordingly. Thank you. Yeah, we're gonna do a couple from the live stream now. Dustin, can you read it? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, People participating out there and watching online uh, answered a few of these questions uh, about the priorities uh, to the nation, the language. Uh, number one, it should be one of the top priorities, more assistance to document speakers and language. Uh, to commit to learn personally, children, grandchildren, and teach whoever will listen. The responsibility is to take the tradition of the Nimina people into the future as it is what it's for. For hundreds of, if not thousands of years, they followed up. Mm -hmm. um, and then 
Mrs. Briner out in Florida says you just use it every day. So, thank you. Yes, use it on your Facebook account. I see Catherine, she uses it every day. And she uses it with her children. And she has a really great network. And I know you guys have a really great network within our people too. And so, one thing I know, I use it, I try to use it on Facebook, but we, I don't have the, you know, I do it phonetically because we don't have the font. You know, and it's too tedious for me. I'm always in a hurry because I'll jump on there and jump off. <laughs> but it's, it's really tedious for me to try to copy and paste. So I will just do it phonetically. So, you know, it's good to just put it out there on social media and s speak what you know. Um, this is Susan Whitehorse Johnson from Walters Public Schools. And I was just wanting to say, um, I went to the walkout for eight days. And um, I stood underneath the statue that Alan Hauser made. And what um, I thought, and I would tell the people that I was talking to out there, was our contribution to this state. We've endured a lot. And up there at the legislature, they were treat teaching, treating those teachers like second class citizens, like they're gnats, annoyed with them because you want money. But they have our children, your children, they had my children, and for the most part, everyone wants them to succeed because they need them to succeed. Now, at, while I was at that statue, I was telling them that represents grandmother and mother, your first teachers. See, for Indians, they're very important. Not just Comanches or Kiowa, but for most Indian tribes, there are a lot of things that are universal with us and that is your grandmother and your mother. And that is where you're, she's holding you. They're holding you, talking to you, you know, cooing with you at that time, and it should be in your language. So that's so important. And then I told him that guardian that was up there was from a Plains Indian, not a certain tribe, but he put his stake in the ground because we're staying here until this is done for our children. So even as I go into these candidates that represent the schools, throw that issue to your teachers what are we going to do about Indian people? You sure want our money. And I have done nothing but said how much money the tribes have given to the state. Yes. Where is it? Yes. Why is it coming back yes. to our Indian people and our languages? Yes. You guys, I'm so passionate about it. But like Edward says, you know, when you start having children, it becomes important. <clears throat> you know, when you become a grandmother, it's even more important. Because those are your little beings that you, you can't even express how much you love them. And you want, when they go in that public school, to be treated like everybody yeah. else. Mm -hmm. oh, you know, okay. so it's so right. important right. that this language, right. so I would say, you know, in the Kiowas, well, we don't have time yes. to go into Kiowa business, but for Comanches, when you come to your, that should be your primary deal with it when you start the deal, when you start your meeting. Okay. This is how important it is. Okay. And like I said, boy, those legislators sure want those Indian monies. Oh, give us your money. Yeah, we want to do bone and dice. Let's get some more money from them. So when you talk to the candidates that are running, they're in your school districts, like the ladies at Cash or here at Elgin, say, we want some things for our Indian kids. And we want success, we want the language, we want our Indian kids to be primary focus, just like everybody else. And I can't tell you, that's all I kept telling people up there. And what's a shame is that the legislator don't have time for our children. And to me, that is the most important resource we have over oil or over the casino monies. But now that they're wanting our money, then they start making them do something for us Indian people. Sorry, I'm on a soapbox. I'm in mama bear mode. Oh, that's so true, Susan. Okay, I'm going to let a couple people have a reflection. I think I'll start with uh, Rita, and then we'll have our story translation. Just some reflections about what you've heard in front of the discussion groups tonight. And anything you want to share on your heart. Ooh. <laughs> 
I've been saying that for a long time. And it's a passion of mine that I have been adamant about for many, many years. Way back there, gosh, when we first started with the language in the classes, Geneva and I wanted so much to have the children, the little guys. We wanted to have classes with the little guys. Start, let's start with the little ones. Let's start with the little bitty ones and then, because they're the ones that need to be taught early on. We couldn't get that going. Well, now we have someone that's working with it, which is a good thing. But I'm seeing, I would like to see more progress. I'd like to see more things done, not just in one area, in all the areas. And I'm so glad that even out there in New Mexico, that all those ones are still trying and struggling to keep this going. We need this, uh, we need, actually, we need our CBC members, all of them to be more involved in Ikata Numanai, because Somebody over there said it's a cornerstone. No, it's not a cornerstone. It's our sub, it's a sub basis of the whole com, our Comanche people. It's a sub, it's, it's us as a people. If we lose our language, we're not a people anymore. We're just out there. Any, and it's not just Comanches, it's everywhere. And I'm saying, way back there when we first started this language, the Cherokees hadn't even started anything. Look at them, how they've grown because they had leadership behind the language people. Their chairman was adamant about getting that language started. I worked for the Cherokees and while we were down there, the chairman, chairman of the tribe made it mandatory that all employees learn some of the language. And that was why they did it. And that's how they got there started. Now, we should have something like that here in our tribe. Our leaders need to be more responsible about, about the language in our, our Numenide. It is a da Numenide. Nansu Yakit, the Maravitsia. That's, it's, I am so sad that Ukisi, Sik Nazi, Sik, Sik Numenazi, Kehits a Numai Numerequat. Or yet a Numai, the Nature, Nature, no, Pesa, or to me, I know. Ukisi, no, Nuraka, Kehmai Tequat. And it's sad to me because. That's all I want to speak. And I want everyone to understand what I'm saying. I want someone to visit with me. And that's so hard not to, and it is hard on me. It makes me feel sad. On the way over here, I was praying and I was thinking about these things and thinking about some of us here that are still struggling to keep this going. We need so much more help. Everybody in every community needs to be involved. And he said something while ago. In each home, in each home, each household, even just a little bit, even if you just put a sign on your salt shaker, Onavi, and the sugar bowl or something, things like that to start getting their people involved, let them learn. There's, there's got to be a way to do this. Let's work on it. Saukurana, Sikata, Anumanai, Namavitsia. Thank you, Ada. So true. Ron, do you want to? I don't want to follow that. <laughs> Ron or Mr. Poe? <coughs> Thank you, Rita. Those were uh, very true words and very inspirational words. Uh, we're very fortunate in having you as our speaker and teaching us. I, uh, I agree, our leadership has fell down in their responsibility. And we need to uh, uh, make sure that they know how we feel about the language and how they should assume responsibility of carrying forth the language and supporting the language and supporting uh, all Comanches. I, uh, I think Saturday is important, but even more important 
is when that ballot goes out, we each one of us need to tell the Comanche people, vote yes on our budget so that we can get this thing off of the ground. It should have been in the tribal government years ago. But for various reasons, it never did uh, materialize. And I think now's the time. We've got, we've got young people that are enthused, and that, that's very encouraging. Uh, we're, the language committee has been working for 25 years, and we're, uh, we're getting old, and we're uh, <laughs> run down, and, and, and we really Thank appreciate the, the, uh, the way you younger folks have uh, taken this task on and, and been so uh, uh, great at organization and getting the word out. I, I appreciate each and every one of you, Carolyn and Randy and uh, Dustin, you, you folks have really uh, uh, made me feel good. You make me feel good right here by your efforts, and I, I want you to know that I appreciate it. And uh, I think we're going to be successful. I think now is the time for us to move forward. And I, this is now. And then it's uh, Johnny Poe, and I would just like to uh, talk about something that Edward talked about is not just the potluck, but <laughs> it, it was brought to my attention that once we get this program going, is that we have an immersion room out here where everybody can come, just like like we are here now visiting, we could go there and visit and and eat and and bring something, you know, potluck uh, and just visit and eat and and no matter that one. Um, that's that's the most important thing. Uh, just like he was talking about simple sentences, just uh, learning simple sentences, then that, that leads to. To larger sentences and then paragraphs, and before you know it, you're speaking and uh, learning all those connectives that go in there. Uh, and I was at a uh, a bow a bow making uh, camp out they have up by Stillwater, <clears throat> God's country. <clears throat> Stillwater, and uh, they, uh, I met a, a councilman there, or he was, he was on the uh, Pueblo Council, and I was introduced myself, and, and uh, somehow he knew me. <laughs> he said, I think you uh, taught my grandkids at, at Elgin, and I said, oh, probably if they were in Comanche class, they were in my class and he said yeah he said um, I, he knew I was on the CBC he said do, do you uh, speak your language I said yeah some and he said well that's good because he said at, at their reservation they have to speak their language to be on the council to even be considered to be on the council and uh, he said, and it, it's really good that way, and, and I agree, I agree, it does. You, you, there, there's so much that comes with the language. It's not just talking and, and knowing more than somebody else, or there's a respect, like I touched on earlier, the respect that comes with the language. And uh, that's through the spirit the spirit of the language. Our language has a strong spirit and and everybody here knows that our nations were, were very spiritual back back in the day and we need to get back to that to be in a more spiritual nation. And that's all I got. But, uh,
Raka. I'm going to have Dustin, before we have Billy do the translation, Dustin's just going to, it'll just take a minute. I'm going to have Dustin uh, give you some exciting news. Uh, we have plenty of things that is going to give you information about the Comanche language planning and development, the new department that we want you to vote on. And we, before he does, before I give it to him, I just want you to understand that the Comanche Language and Cultural Committee is on the budget also. And it's very, very important that you get the word out to your family members that we need both of these. And right now, until we get this planning and development department up, you know, we, they are the ones that are going to be doing a strategic plan for the next three years. And they will be assessing, and it'll be all on this website that Dustin's gonna tell you about. But it's just very important that you are mindful. We will have, we'll have a press release out in the newspaper. And it's also on this website he's gonna tell you about. So I just want you to be you know, be supportive of both of these language programs. Thanks. Yeah, okay, so we just launched our informational website. It's called uh, www.talkcomanche.org. Um, it's, it's got basically, you know, everything we've been talking about and all information that we've uh, got from our meetings and our consultations and some of our uh, workshops we've had over the last uh, seven months. Uh, we have a timeline on there, <coughs> and let me go ahead and pull it up. It looks like our it's on, on the live stream feed. So we want everyone to know that this is a, a timely process, and to build a strategic plan takes, takes a long time and expertise uh, in these really specific areas, and we want to do it right, and we want it to last a long time, so we decided to uh, do it in phases. This first phase is, where is it at here? Okay, it's basically form the language planning group, uh, develop a proposal, and present the proposal to leadership for budget approval to be voted on by the tribal council. So if we get, when we get approved, phase two will start, and it'll be the first year, which is a strategic planning phase. We would hire language revitalization development team uh, to include a director, language coordinator, information and communication specialist, uh, develop the strategic plan for the language department. So all the nuts and bolts are going into it during this first year. So then the next year will actually be the implementation of the new department. So there's, there, you can just see how much planning it's going to take. And a lot of this stuff has come through lots of talking, lots of meetings and interviewing, work, talking with tribal members and elders. And we've had another live stream uh, back in November, was it? Um, just, it's just a a lot of information and points and things were being brought out and all of this is really comes down to designing a language department that's uh, specific to our needs as a Comanche as our as our community in our tribal community so so check that out uh, talkcomanche.org um, if you have any other questions or need to know any other information contact us there's a contact um, portion here on the website and we'll get back to you um, let's see, we also had a press release in the Comanche Nation mm -hmm. newspaper. Um, it's a, just an article, it has the timeline in there, a little condensed version, and uh, we will be doing a presentation at the uh, annual meeting on Saturday. It's gonna be a short presentation, but we just wanted to try to quickly get the, the, the gist of what we're, what we're planning on here. Um, so, so check that out, it will be live streamed also. Uh, anything else you want to add on that? Okay, thank you. Thank you for hanging in there with us. Billy Craiger is going to tell you what the story was about. If you didn't already know. If you didn't know. Pictures. Okay, on the first page. So, basically, Eat the wasape. That's the last one. Utta kasik habi neeti unakara. Okay, a long time ago, 
this bear, he's all alone, just laying there. He can hear the wind. I am so bored, he said. I'm so bored. I want some friends, he says. He says, Uda makaruina. I can feed them. We all want to eat. Na so ti uri makarui. He can feed them. He can feed a lot of them. So said, Dika awa mawuni. He looked, and then he looked into his cupboard where he stores his food. He looked. Ge na dika. He didn't have anything in there. It was bare, in other words. Uhais kahu kimatsi. A little mouse came to him, his friend, one of his friends. No no ko pa'utum. He had a pie and he gave it to the bear. So say wasape utewe. No he taku anna. Ura he said. So wasape said, Oh, I'm i I'm so thankful. Thank you. <coughs> Very good, he said. Wasapeta Uvia No he taku no anoko. He said, Oh my, it's a nice looking pie. Gehe nahi nahika. He says, But I have nothing. Nothing. He's talking to that little kahu. And he says, Semata uri ni mai. Mariakwe. Someone came and said, Mariakwe, hello. Tabukina taikan. A little rabbit came inside. Suse finano kopau tun. And he gave him a little biscuit, or a, a, it was a biscuit. Oh, a little piece of cake. Pinano kop. Suse wasapi utewaka. Ura, ura. Tabukina tsa namsi ikan. The rabbit comes up in a hurry, like running towards him. Wasape said, Era koki. He says, Ha, mekse tabukina. Tabukina, unatsawi, utsi tiawe. He points to the door. The little rabbit points to the door. Uhuna. This badger or a beaver, Huna. He came in with some fish and he gave him fish. He had a lot of fish and so he gave it to the bear and the bear said, Thank you. <laughs> See, he has a lot of fish. Mm -hmm. So say young Etsy. So He said, It sure is cold, he says to him. He says, he's smiling. I have ha I have a lot of fish that I had caught. And he says, Thank you. So so said Tereku, that's a prairie dog. Barai Mo, that's a um, a mole. Is I think it's because of his hands they go backwards. If you ever seen a mole, and Sokovita Kukimai, he they come from the ground. The Tereku and the the mole. So the Nakutabeika, he has a lot of pecans too. Some. And he gave him those things too. Oh, do who to, de who to, we need to beat them. The owl, oh, oh, do who to is a blackbird. De who to is must be maybe the hummingbird, small bird, comes flying in, we need And they arrived. Wasape tukap hamnanda yada. They gave the bear the food. Desa 
Puhi huva, that's tea. Puhi huva, mekse suru ni kuyu. That's what they gave him. Wasafe uri he says, when he was looking, he said, Gesa, means he, he said, wait. <coughs> Where's the picture? <coughs> Let me hear the Oh, okay. Wasafe kutsani, to say kutta garden. Muha wuni, wasafe kutsani. He he got, is that nervous? Kutsani. Um, Good son. Good, good son. Is it nervous? So said, good, He sat down hard. And then he muhabuni, he frowned. He got a, in other words, he got a little sad. Muhabuni. Muhatsa gamma hika. Nasena kehina hika. He says, you have all brought something. He said, and me. I don't have anything, he says to them. There is nothing in my cupboards, he says. The kahu says to him, don't feel bad. We have a lot of food. You tell us stories, he says. Make him feel better. They all hugged. They hugged him. It was all good there at that time. Suda Uda, he says. Thank you. So they get the big blanket. So say, oh yes, garden, and they all sat on it. What's up, Suk garden? And the bear sat down with them. Oh, hi, Ziva, I got him. He sat among them all together. Suda, oh, hi, oh, who, Kukanika. And their, their friends sat there in his house and some of all get the gun, and they all ate together with all the food. So say what's up? It's on the it's on the suka. What's up? They have to have what? Ira menunigui. Ira. So the bear felt good. Let me have that. Let me have that. Give me the mic. Oh, give her the mic. Except. She didn't tell the most important part, but we pick, we picked this story because Comanches are this way, or used to be in my day. Now this person didn't have any food, but his little friends came and they gave him to, uh, all the food they needed, they brought it, and they ate it happily ever after because they didn't eat the pihisoan because he didn't have nothing. They just told him to tell him a story. And that's the way old Comanches were. A lot of times there was people without no food, and my grandpa and my grandmother, they'd take them food and put it there, and everybody would be happy. And, and you don't need to be ashamed about it because somehow they knew it. And that's why we picked this story. That's what you pull out of this, this little... We were, we were hoping there was more children here, but... I guess some of y'all are for children like. <laughs> Let me say one thing. Okay. Potluck. <laughs> okay, Susan wants to say one more thing. Okay. Okay. Ada, Adaka, thanks. Tune in to the live stream. If you can't be here on Saturday, we're first item on the agenda, I believe. And so we'll, um, we'll be presenting on behalf of the Comanche Language Planning and Development. And check out the website. It has uh, probably answered all the questions you have. And if it doesn't, then go to the page where you can send us an email and ask your questions. Or call us. We all work here at The Nation. Uh, Dustin, Randy, or me can call us. Okay. Ta-da.
thank you guys for coming so much. Yeah.